Today I'm gonna to show you a quick, easy, and affordable way to scan yourself for sleep apnea in the comfort of your own home, in your own bed, using nothing but this ring. Stick around and I'll show you how. Hi everyone, my name's Nick and welcome to my channel CPAP Reviews. For those of you tuning in for the very first time, it's great to be with you. This is my education channel on snoring and sleep apnea and some of the products that we use to diagnose and treat those conditions. So if that's something that you're interested in, please consider hitting that subscribe button and joining our great community. And for all the regular viewers out there, you know who you are. I really appreciate your support throughout the years. So thanks very much for that. Those of you who have previously done a sleep test would probably report back that it's not the most enjoyable experience in the world. Getting all those wires put all over you and things up your nose and then being asked, yeah, go to sleep now and we'll monitor you through the night and make sure you're breathing okay. You might be thinking to yourself, you know, is this the best way to check my sleep in this really unfamiliar environment with all this stuff on me? And look, there are different levels of sleep tests. There are some that are really in depth, but then there's other tests which are more screening tests. They're just gonna give you an idea as to if there is something going on in your sleep. It's gonna tell you whether or not your breathing is pretty good, or maybe it's pretty average and you probably need to investigate a little bit further. And I think in today's day and age with all that's going on in COVID, you know, this is a really easy, quick and affordable way just to give yourself a quick check to make sure that there's nothing going on in your sleep. Now, let's be brutally honest here. Majority of you who have sleep apnea probably know that there is something going on with your sleep, if you really think about it. You know, you've probably been told by someone along the line, maybe a partner or a friend, uh, that you stop breathing or you gasp a little bit during the night. You've probably been told that you snore like a truck or that you, you, know, you rattle the walls, something like that. And you probably also notice, if you sit down and think about them, some of the signs and symptoms. And I'm talking about, you know, falling asleep on the couch in the early afternoon or just being constantly tired and irritable, being in a bad mood, being moody, forgetful. Maybe you've got some of these health conditions as well, such as high blood pressure or diabetes. If you're overweight, that's a big giveaway sign as well. So even without having any testing done, if you really just sit there and just analyze yourself, you're probably gonna get a good idea as to whether or not you've got something going on in your sleep. And nine times out of 10, if you have any of those sort of symptoms going on there, chances are you do have something to look at and it's gonna be either mild, moderate or severe, depending on how many times you're having apnea during the night per hour. So how do we do this screen? Well, we use this little device here on my finger called an O2 ring. And basically this little ring monitors my blood oxygen levels and also my heart rate continuously through the night. And we can then use that information as a bit of a guide to see if we have anything going on with our breathing during the nighttime. Most healthy adults with no sort of lung conditions are gonna have blood oxygen concentrations probably above 94, 95. Now those really good athletic types are probably gonna have oxygen levels at 98, 99. And maybe some of you smokers out there are gonna have blood oxygen levels a little bit lower, maybe sort of 92, 93, even lower, depending on how bad your lungs are. The Greek word apnea literally means without breath. So if you're someone who's suffering from sleep apnea episodes during the nighttime, it basically means that there's a restriction in your upper airway that's limiting the amount of oxygen getting into your blood. And when this happens, our oxygen levels drop and our brain, which monitors this information, wakes us up out of sleep so that we take a quick breath and our oxygen levels rise up again. And then the cycle repeats itself many, many times during the night. But it's this drop in blood oxygen that's really the cause of all the problems. It's the interruption in our sleep. It puts the body under a lot of stress. It puts the heart under a lot of stress. And it causes all those nasty things like fatigue, high blood pressure, cardiovascular problems, and just feeling like crap at the end of the day. So it's really nice to be able to do this in the comfort of your own home. You can run it over a few nights just to give yourself a really good screening tool as to whether or not your blood oxygen levels are staying nice and stable throughout the night, or are you having all these episodes of desaturations where your oxygen levels are dropping down to 85, 80, 75, where you're stopping breathing throughout the night. That's the only way it can really happen. I mean, either the ring's fallen off your finger 
or you're stopping breathing. But I'm gonna show you some data in a minute. I'm gonna talk more about this ring and we're gonna go through some examples on what to look for if you're doing a bit of a home sleep test screen. Alrighty, so here we have it, the Wellu O2 ring. So I'll just do a quick unboxing for you so you can see it up close and personal. And then here's the little, little ring here. It's really comfortable to wear, really soft. You hardly even know you're wearing it. And then you've also got a USB charging cable. So when you first get it, plug it into the computer and you just plug the charger in the back here and it, you know, it charges up over a couple of hours and then it's good to go. So there's no real on or off switch with it. When you put it on your finger, it turns on. And then when you take it off your finger, it turns off. When you're ready to use it, the first thing you wanna do is download the app, Vi Health. Right here it is here, Vi Health. So, and it says here, Vi Health would like to use Bluetooth. So make sure you got Bluetooth on your phone on, but don't connect through your phone's Bluetooth through the settings of the phone. You wanna connect through the actual app itself. So just click OK. It's gonna search for the ring, just have it close by. There you go, it's come up with the O2 ring. Click on the O2 ring and then you just tap on the top of the device where it says to tap there. So on the top of the device, we just tap. So you can see here that this has already loaded some data that I already had on the ring from when I was just wearing it around earlier. So if we go into here, we can actually already start pulling up some data just when I was walking around the house for an hour and a half. Another really cool feature of this ring is that you can actually set it up to vibrate if your oxygen levels or your heart rate go below a certain criteria. So this is kind of cool because basically for some of you, you might you know only have sleep apnea on your back when you're on your back. So you can set this up if we go to settings and we go to SBO2 reminder, we can actually set here an SBO2 threshold. So we can change what this threshold is. So let's just say 90. So I've got an SBO2 threshold of 90. Now I can set here device vibration intensity. So we've got very weak, weak, medium, strong, very strong. And if I have it very strong, that is vibrating very, very strong on my finger. So it's literally gonna wake me up out of sleep. No problem about that. So if I'm on my back, I start having sleep apnea and my oxygen levels drop below 90, this ring's gonna vibrate, wake me up, basically tell me that something's going on with my sleep. I need to change position. Maybe I need to go onto my side. So you can also use that as, you know, a little bit of a, basically a trigger to tell you that something's going on. If you've got sleep apnea, you're going to have this thing probably buzzing all night throughout the night. So that'll really give you an idea before you even wake up in the morning as to whether or not you've got sleep apnea, because you'll just have this thing buzzing on your finger all night. But you can play around with that. It's, it's a really cool little feature. Uh, if you're wearing it for a night, and say you wanna get up and do something and take it off your finger. If you take it off, it'll start counting down from 10 seconds. If you put it back on in that 10 seconds, it'll keep recording from the same chunk of recording. If you take it off though and that 10 seconds goes, then the next time you put it on, it'll provide you with a new recording. So once it's on your finger, it's on. When you connect it to the app, it will automatically sync the time, but you can check the time just by clicking the little button on the top here and it'll show you. Alrighty guys, it's time for bed. It's about uh, 11 o'clock here in Melbourne and the whole family's asleep. I've got my O2 ring on, my little glow stick, ET phone home. <laughs> and I'll let you know how the results go in the morning. Cheers. So this is my results from last night and it's actually really interesting. So the little buzzer on my finger actually went off a couple of hours into sleep. And I woke up in quite a shock because I really didn't expect it to go off. But you can see here that my pulse rate just went through the roof. And this was also coupled with my oxygen levels dropping below 90 and triggering the ring to vibrate to sort of wake me up out of sleep. I'm assuming this is when I was in REM sleep, when I was dreaming. And this pulse rate is because I was having some sort of dream. I don't know if it was a nightmare or, or maybe it was a good dream. I don't know. But uh, whatever it was... Yeah, the ring woke me up just to say that your blood oxygen levels are dropping, but it was only the one time during the night. But you can also see a few other little spots here where I sort of dipped into that orange zone. And that would have also been probably REM sleep when I was dreaming, or maybe perhaps when I was on my back. But look, overall, if we go sort of from the start to finish, 
that most of it's in the green there. And if we go to the stats there, you can see here that at the very top it says the amount of time below 90, and that was only 40 seconds. So 40 seconds of the whole night below 90%. So I'm, I'm pretty good, I'm in the clear here. I'll just run through some of these other stats because they're quite interesting. And then after this, I'll actually show you someone else's results. So you can see the difference between someone who's got reasonably good breathing and someone who's struggling a bit and probably needs to investigate a bit further. All right, so starting on the top left, we've got the recording time. So that's how long I had the device on for. So close to eight hours. Now I wasn't asleep for those eight hours because I've got a brand new baby, but that's how long I had the ring on for. Drops over 4%. It's only four times it dropped over 4%, which is, which is fine. My average was 96%, so that's all the oxygen levels throughout the night averaged out equals 96%, so nice and high, I'm really happy with that. And then my O2 score, so 9.6, so that's an A plus in my language, and I'm up here in the nice, if you go to the right here, you can see I'm up here in the nice green section, which means my breathing's really good. My average heart rate is 66, which is also in a really good spot, um, and on the app it'll show you once again, sort of this range between red and green, so you can get an idea as to where your heart rate should be. And then we've got drops per hour. This is kind of like your apnea hypopnea index, like how many times per hour you're having, you know, events. Apneas, hypopneas, and then the lowest oxygen level that it went down to, 88%, which is right here where it triggered it off. So that, I really enjoyed doing this and I'm gonna do it again tonight because I'm fascinated to see how this went and I'm glad it's going well, but at the same time, I'm very interested to see this really high pulse rate here coupled with this oxygen desaturation. And that ring did wake me up, it did its job. And I was on my back and I rolled onto my side and uh, obviously when I rolled onto my side, my heart rate dropped right down and my oxygen levels went back up again. All right, so let's cross now to someone who's got completely different results. Okay, so just to make it nice and easy for comparison, I have my results from last night on the left-hand side and another person's on the right. And the first thing I wanna draw your attention to is with my results, obviously with the oxygen levels, they're pretty stable. There's a lot of green bars, not many orange bars, but if we come across here to that person on the right, you'll see that there's far more orange bars happening during the night. In fact, this person had 65 times where their oxygen levels dropped over 4% compared with mine, which was only four times. And each one of these times when this person had a drop of over 4%, the brain would have basically been coming out of sleep to tell the body to wake up and have a breath because it sensed there's a problem, it knows it's not getting the oxygen it needs, so there's 65 interruptions during the night and that's gonna play havoc with the sleep cycle. It's gonna make it very fragmented, make it very difficult for this person to get into a nice deep sleep and get into that nice good REM sleep where they're gonna do their dreams. And so they're gonna wake up, even though they're gonna have eight hours of sleep, they're gonna wake up feeling very average because they've just had so many interruptions because of their breathing. Now, if I had to make a guess here, I'd be saying this person in particular would be in the mild to moderate category. You can see here from this little graph up the top that they're drifting down into that, you know, that yellow zone. But if you're someone who's having a lot more oxygen desaturations than this, and maybe those ox oxygen desaturations are going into the red zone, then you know, you're more than likely gonna have moderate or severe sleep apnea. And this is basically how we do the screen. And it's really simple, really basic, and you can do it as many times as you like. Now, if you're already diagnosed with sleep apnea and you're using CPAP therapy to treat it, you can actually use this ring to check how effective your therapy levels are in controlling your sleep apnea. For example, we can go to bed of a night time and put our mask on and wear the ring. And in the morning when we get up, we can check our app and have a look at our oxygen saturation levels in our blood. Now, if those oxygen saturation levels are nice and steady, nice and high, and there's not too much going on, then we know that our therapy is really controlling our sleep apnea. It's doing a great job to even out our breathing, and it's just opening up all those blockages. If we wake up in the morning and we have a look at that little graph of our oxygen saturation, and we're seeing all these big dips in our oxygen level, maybe it's going from 94 down to 85 or 94 down to 89, but it's happening throughout the night, 
then we might need to make some adjustments to our therapy levels. Maybe we need to just bump up that pressure just a little bit to get a little bit more control of our sleep apnea. So that's just another great way you can use this ring just to monitor your sleep apnea and your CPAP therapy. Now guys, if you wanna go out and pick yourself up an O2 ring so you can start screening yourself or your friends or your family for sleep apnea, then I'll put a link in the description of the video down below where you can pick them up from. They're FDA approved, so you know their quality and the data is very reliable. And when you're checking out, if you use the coupon code CPAP reviews, you're gonna get an extra 10% off what is already a really reasonable price of $169. And that gets you your ring and access to the app and you can use it as many times as you want with as many people as you want. And you can go ahead and screen yourself in the comfort of your own home just to see if maybe there is something going on with your sleep. But I reckon many of you already know. If you have any questions or you need a little bit more information, then feel free to put a comment in the comment section below and I'll do my best to help you out. If you enjoyed the video and you'd like to show your support, then please consider hitting that like button and subscribing to the channel. And until next time, sleep well, be safe, and look out for one another. Bye for now.